ball. We can and do media ball. Down. And by the way, I'm going to be in ATL, so I'm holding Ooh. you. You kind of probably be in their bowl game, no big deal. Monday Night Football is yeah. back tonight with an NFC East rivalry game as Jalen Hurts and the undefeated Eagles host Wendell the Commanders. Bowl. 8 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. I can't with you two. Monday Night Countdown kicks off our coverage at 6 Eastern. Let's check back in at the Domino's pregame headquarters where Adam Schefter is getting ready for tonight. Adam, all kinds of issues in Washington at the moment, but let's start on the field. Do we finally get to see Chase Young on the field tonight? No, we do not, Laura. The 4 o'clock deadline came in which they would have to activate him by, and they did not do that. So it will be another week without Chase Young, who's still recovering from that knee injury. Washington is hoping to get him back after missing his 18th straight game with that ACL tear, but it will not be tonight. It will be at least another week for Chase Young. And meanwhile, there's controversy swirling around the Commanders franchise and what Daniel Snyder will do with this team. And there seems to be increasing speculation across the league that eventually Dan Snyder is going to sell and he's going to sell sooner rather than later. The franchise could fetch a record sum shortly after the Denver Broncos went for $4.65 billion this summer. This franchise could go for five, six, even $7 billion. And the Philadelphia oh Eagles, the last unbeaten team in the league, as you mentioned, Laura, they have not trailed in the second half of, the, of a game this season. They will continue to put that on the line tonight, continue to march towards perfection. A lot of fun to have an unbeaten team in the NFL. We'll see how long they can keep this up and whether they can challenge to go onto Mer Mercury Morris's neighborhood. Yeah, um, as Lisa Salters, Adam, reported earlier, the Eagles say they're not even talking about the undefeated. They're just focusing on the next game. Adam, we'll see you in about an hour on Monday Night Countdown right here on ESPN. Mina, let's talk about this game. If the commanders are going to test the Eagles defensively tonight, where would you expect them to attack? They're going to run the ball. Uh, you know, we've talked about this with the Eagles. It's really their only weakness as a football team is against the run. You even saw that on display on Thursday night against Houston. Even if it was a decisive victory, still something they struggled with. Now, some of that is by design, guys. Guys, the Eagles play with a lot of light boxes. It is part of their defensive scheme. However, I do question whether there might be some changes, especially since they haven't had Jordan Davis, uh, and they're facing a team that we know is going to run the ball a great deal against them. So I'll be watching to see how Jonathan Gannon approaches this matchup with a specific intention of stopping the run. Yeah, Dan, let's talk about the Eagles offense for a little bit. You had something else? Or you uh, this, it's fascinating. I, you, you just don't feel that when you watch Philly. You know, like, when yeah. you watch their tape, you don't feel like, but listening to me to talk in their numbers, it's obviously a reality. You just don't feel it when you watch that. I don't know. Interesting. So the Eagles offense, though, what do you think they'll do tonight? Where's somewhere they can attack against Washington? Yeah, it, Their defense was a lot better last week. For sure. In the air, it's going to be attacking the middle of the field. You know, Washington really has kind of become this middle field open defense, meaning two high safeties. And so often they've got the ability to attack the middle. I, they'll run the football well. They'll run their RPOs. But when Jalen's dropping back, I think they're going to work the middle of the field, work the, in between the numbers. A.J. Brown's size will be a big part of it. Dallas Goddard's size will be a big part of it. Their screen game, understanding and knowing that Washington's front is going to be trying to be as aggressive as possible. The screen game that's become a really big part, certainly the tight end screen game. I think that's how Philadelphia attacks them offensively. I, I, I think this is going to be a little bit closer yeah. and, and uncomfortable for a minute. Now, I see okay. Philly pulling away. The two things you got to remember. The Washington F the Commanders team defensive line is starting to play well, yeah. right? And Jalen may have some issues when he drops back between Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. And another thing for people to watch out to in this game, Taylor Heineke's legs. Hmm. That's 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 a very that's something that equalizes a lot in football and he's willing to get gone. The first time we saw this guy out was against a really good Tampa defense and he was in the playoffs and played very well and it was because of his mobility. So that's we'll something you have to pay attention a, a little bit more I think in the future. I think the best way to attack Philadelphia defensively is to flip them inside out. I think you got to make their corners tackle and I think you got to make their linebackers cover. Easier said than done, but that's the schematic way that I would go. Their corners are too good. You can't ask him to, like, you got to ask him to tackle, and the linebackers got to cover. Yeah, something to watch for tonight, and even if the commanders can't really do it tonight, we'll see if anybody else can yeah. down the stretch. See if those Eagles can stay undefeated. Well, here's our game picks. 
Let's see how cute we look. Oh, what are you wearing, Swaggo, on your head? I don't know, that beard. Beer mm. hat? That's what my people wear. <laughs> that beard. The beard looks good. Like, you got a fresh haircut on that beard. Um, all right, so we're all on the Eagles, guys. Uh, and Marcus, you said you thought it might be a little bit close early, but then I see your score there, so they break away late. Yeah. Laura, what do you think? Is this yeah. the Big 12? I don't know. I was having fun. Have I like Keyshawn with my scores, Have okay? Keyshawn. <laughs> 47 to 13. Da you guys, Dan and Mina are identical there. 27 oh, to 20. Geez. All right, I'm what just asking because I have to. Does anybody want to change their score? I mean, are there nah, picks? And I got to go no? home to my wife. Yeah, your no. wife, a big Philly fan. We'll see nice. what they Averaging a season-high 5.7 yards per rush in their win over the Jaguars, that opened up the play-action passing game for Patrick Mahomes. He completed 10 of his 13 attempts when using play action for a season high 152 yards and two touchdowns. Travis Kelsey had a team high 62 receiving yards on those plays. However, Dan, you thought the Chiefs made some of their best plays without Kelsey on the field. Please explain. Well, one play stands out. Really, nine guys caught targets from Patrick Mahomes yesterday. But if you look down in the red zone, it's second and one. Travis Kelsey's not on the field. So you automatically think, well, this Chiefs offense might struggle. Absolutely not. They've got two other tight ends that are playing on the field. Patrick Mahomes has got the opportunity to see the bottom part of the screen, climb the pocket vertically, which is where he's best, and then that wide receiver MVS crosses from one side of the field all the way to the other. We often, at least this year, correlate the Chiefs offense, and probably rightfully so, with, well, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Can they be good if Kelsey's not on the field? They were really good on that play and really good yesterday. It's diversifying their offense even more. Yeah, that offense, I feel like the word diverse has been what we've used Every so week. much. Every so week. many different weapons. And, of course, Juju Smith-Schuster out for some of that game as well. We'll continue to watch for an update on him as he's in concussion protocol. Marcus has the towel out. What does that mean, Swag? Last week I was asked the question, would Nick Bosa get over a half sack? I said, you're damn right, because that's what he boasts to do. And guess what he did against the Los Angeles Chargers? He got more than a half sack. But this didn't make BMB. But it was a phenomenal rush. It was power. It was get underneath and get Herbo on the ground after being phenomenal. But I got some stuff for y'all. And I don't even know if they call them big men. They may be medium, but damn it, they oh, big to me. Medium men. <laughs> it's big man bowling time. And y'all know how we turn up on this segment. Finna give you all I got. Campus bash. <laughs> Let me introduce y'all to the big fellas that made plays on Sunday. Let's go. <laughs> Somebody better block him. All you doing is saying, where did he come from? Martin Spill Jr. with the rip claw. Go get the quarterback. Big me and people. Well, I told y'all earlier in the bump that this was a little bit different from BMB because we got some medium men on the, on the BMB today. I'm going to usher them in. They bigger than most people in the world, so we'll still call them big men balling. My man, Devin White, they came to the party, everybody. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers let the man loose. 45-8. He got the Geno. He caused the fumble. He knocked it on the ground, and then Devin didn't even know. Devin said, I know what I just did. I'm going to celebrate. Y'all get the damn football. Man, I love it, Tampa. You stopped the run and allowed him to rush. Now, there's a song by a man named Donnie McClurkin called We Fall Down But We Get Up. And that's what Max Crosby did right here, because he a hustler. Max Crosby gets cut, gets up, finds Matt Ryan before Matt Ryan made the long run and gets him on the ground. This is the beautiful thing about number 98, the hustle and the muscle. And we fall down, but we get up. Go get a sack. And I had to do it, y'all, because this stat line from Harold Perkins Jr. at Louisiana State University was absolutely ridiculous. By the way, we secured the West, so we're going to Atlanta. I'm going to turn up in ATL. Drinks on me. But 40 did his damn thing. You see it right there. Four sacks, two forced fumbles, a pass deflection, and every one of them was needed. This game ended 13-10. 40 won the game. He medium, he not BMB, but he played big against Arkansas and punched the ticket to the ATL. Drinks on me, club on me, turn up, I'll be there. December 3rd, <laughs> LSU against Georgia, turn up one time. That's BMB, college edition. My man 50 had a song called Many Men, Many but these men. were medium men. <laughs> medium men and all of them wish death on quarterback hey the only Yo, time we're gonna get you only time we're gonna get you is uh if you if you start going to smedium 
<laughs> what can I be doing with you?